welcome to this lecture 29 of groundwater hydrology. Uh, the topics to be covered in this lecture are uh, subsurface investigations of groundwater. So, this is this is continued and within this, so we are uh, geophysical methods and under this geophysical methods, the resistivity method then followed by spontaneous potential method followed by radiation method. So, these are all the methods of uh, logging and uh, under the radiation method this natural gamma logging then gamma gamma logging then neutron logging. So, these are the topics which we will be covering in uh, today's lecture and uh, so we will go to we will continue with this geophysical method which we were discussing in the previous lecture. So, here the that is the geophysical log geo geophysical log in a consolidated rock. consolidated rock or uh, formation. So, in the previous lecture we discussed the geophysical logging in an unconsolidated rock or formation and in this lecture we will uh, consider the geophysical logging in a consolidated rock or uh, formation and here we have a consolidated rock or formation with uh, various sun and uh, various uh, formations at different uh, depths. Let us say number these formations as 1, 2, 3, 4, then maybe say 5, 6, then 7, 4, 1, maybe 2. And uh, so here this 1 represents 
clay or clay stone number 2 formation number 2 represents say marly limestone formation number 3 let us say it represents limestone formation number 4 rock formation consolidated rock formation number 4 represent marlstone consolidated rock formation rock or formation number 5 represents sandstone the consolidated rock or uh, formation number 6 represents uh, sandstone with salt water with say let us say this is a higher density or say dense sandstone and seven let us say this is sandstone with salt water so let us say these are the the rock the seven formations in the consolidated rock and uh, let us uh, say the the spontaneous potential is indicated in this uh, green color so this is the spontaneous potential and uh, here this is a uh, positive on the left side and negative on the positive on the right side and negative on the left side and uh, in this consolidated uh, this one so it could this is a clay will have a very po small positive uh, this one or uh, almost zero then it is followed by so the marly limestone will be slightly higher then followed by limestone it will be even higher then followed by again uh, marlstone so that will also have almost uh, negligible uh, spontaneous potential then uh, the fifth one is sandstone so the sandstone will have some uh, spontaneous potential then the sixth one is uh, dense sandstone it will even have a higher spontaneous potential and uh, the seventh one is uh, this one with uh, uh, salt water so it will have a negative spontaneous potential then followed by four that is marlstone which is uh, negligible spontaneous potential then followed by there is a clay stone which also has negligible potential then lastly it is sandstone but with salt water so again so that also has a slightly negative but negligible you know this is the second one is the marly limestone it will have a slightly this one so this is the variation this is the geophysical logging in terms of the spontaneous potential and similarly the geophysical logging in terms of the resistivity so this is uh, so here this uh, in this case this is the increasing direction of uh, so this is a uh, increasing direction and uh, the resistivity for the uh, this one that is uh, clay or limestone is quite less then for marly limestone it is uh, higher then it is uh, the 
limestone it is even higher than the marlstone it is uh, less then the fifth one is sandstone so the sandstone is uh, higher higher resistivity and uh, the sixth one is uh, dense sandstone it will have slightly lower resistivity and seventh one is uh, sandstone with salt water and that will have much less resistivity than uh, uh, the fourth one is a uh, marlstone that will have uh, slightly more resistivity than sandstone with salt water then again this is a uh, clay stone with uh, low resistivity then again this is a uh, marlstone so like this so this is the resistivity log and then the the third one let us say and the same thing if we represent the gamma ray so in this case and again this gamma ray so it is the this is the increasing direction so in the first that is clay stone it has a some uh, gamma ray potential then for the marly limestone the gamma ray potential is less then this uh, limestone it is even less then uh, this uh, marlstone it is slightly more then this uh, the the fifth one is this is a sandstone so it is less then uh, the sixth one is also less then the seventh one so this is a seventh one is a it's a even less slightly less then four it will be slightly is one and uh, again so this one and then two so this is the the gamma ray logging so this is a geophysical logging in a consolidated uh, rock or foundation so now we will specifically go to the resistivity method of logging and uh, in this so basically so so here this uh, potential elect current and potential electrodes are lowered in an uncased well and uh, to measure electrical resistivity of uh, surrounding media and thereby to obtain to obtain their variation their uh, 
variation with respect to depth. And uh, here, so the the multi electrode method is most the most commonly used method is the multi electrode method and in this so there are uh, basically uh, short normal long normal and uh, so within this the short normal that is a uh, electrode arrangement then the long normal electrode arrangement and then the lateral so these are the electrode arrangement so let us briefly discuss the short normal electrode arrangement so in which so this is the short normal electrode arrangement so in this so this is a an uncased well and uh, here one side is uh, so this is the voltmeter and here so this is the the point m and uh, so this is the reference point and uh, so this is the a and the distance between a and m the vertical distance between a and m is very small so and of course so this is a uh, this is taken from the source that is keys and uh, mccrary in 1971 and uh, they have for the short normal so they have they adopted a distance of am which is uh, symmetrical with respect to this uh, reference point as a 0.4 meter so that is m is 0.2 meter above this uh, reference uh, point, uh, this uh, midpoint and a is 0.2 meter below this one and uh, from a the other electrode is the current electrode is uh, going and uh, here so it is uh, the current that is the ammeter and uh, there is uh, an ac generator so this is a uh, ac generator and uh, from the ac generator so there is another current electrode which is uh, going point b and the distance between the vertical distance this between b and m is uh, around 15 meters and uh, so this is the short elect short normal electrode arrangement and uh, now we'll go on to the another uh, the second type of arrangement for the this resistivity method of logging that is the the long normal
electrode arrangement so in this the so this is the uncased well this is the ground level and uh, here the reference point so this is the reference point and uh, this the electrode a which is a current electrode and in this case the earthing or the earthing is with the current electrode in the earlier case the earthing was with the potential electrode and in this case the earthing is with the current electrode and uh, so here there is an ac generator so this is the ac generator and from the ac generator there is a an arrangement to measure current and there is a, this a grounding and this is a, the point p and a, here this a, the potential electrode so that is this is n and a, so here there is a an arrangement to measure the voltage and uh, this one so then the other electrode that is uh, on the top side of this reference line so this is the or the uh, this is the reference point and uh, so the this is m and the distance this is uh, or m or m dash so this distance adopted is about uh, this am dash is 1.6 meters which is symmetrical with respect to this reference point and again this uh, m dash n this is again 15 meters so this is also taken from the same source that is uh, keys and uh, mccrary 1971 so the only difference between this and the short normal electrode arrangement is the distance is between the uh, the grounded uh, current electrode which is below the reference point and uh, the ungrounded potential electrode which is above the reference point at the same distance so this distance is uh, much higher it is of the order of say 1.6 meters while in the previous case it was just uh, 0.4 meters and uh, now let us come to the lateral arrangement so this uh, this is the long normal electrode arrangement and uh, now let us uh, consider the the lateral electrode arrangement again this is from the same source that is keys and uh, mccrary and in this lateral arrangement so the this uh, the distance ao so this is uh, the uncased well and uh, so here this is uh, the reference point
and uh, that is denoted by the letter O and uh, the electrode the uh, potential electrode M and N are on either side of this uh, reference point and there is a voltmeter and uh, so this is uh, M I am sorry this is uh, M is above this one and N is uh, below the reference point and the, the distance is much less and in this case the current electrode A. So, this is below or rather above the, the potential electrode M and uh, there is an arrangement to measure current and uh, there is an AC generator. So, this is the AC generator and the other uh, this uh, current electrode is the topmost that is uh, at point B. So, this distance A O. So, here uh, remember uh, none of the uh, current electrode pairs or the potential electrode pairs are grounded. So, the distance A O is uh, of the order of say 5.7 meters and again the distance between A and B is of the order of say 15 meters. So, this is the lateral electrode arrangement. So, basically with uh, each of these arrangements, so we can measure the resistivity and this resistivity is uh, So, in this case the resistivity log. So, that is uh, so this is the depth and here this is the resistivity. So, this is in uh, ohm meter and uh, let us say this is uh, 0 0 and this is a 500 and then this is a 1000 ohm meter and uh, let us uh, consider the normal. So, in this case let us see this is the, the normal the resistivity it may vary So, this is the A, M and then B. So, this is the normal resistivity that is normal uh, electrode arrangement. And on the other hand the lateral electrode arrangement. So, this is uh, A and this is I am sorry this is O and A. So, this is the lateral electrode arrangement for this the, the resistivity may show a different uh, slightly the staggered this one slightly the one with the this time lag. So, 
So, this is the lateral electrode arrangement shown in green color. So, here uh, actually, so this uh, the resistivity. So, this resistivity logs are used. So, this is a resistivity log. to determine specific resistivities of strata and uh, so this is uh, uh, though this specific resistivity, the specific resistivity of an unconfined aquifer, unconsolidated aquifer. So, it depends upon porosity packing degree of saturation and temperature so the the fresh water will have the fresh water sand has moderate to high values And uh, this one, the shale clay salt water have uh, low electrical resistivity. Fresh water sand has a uh, moderate to high values of electrical resistivity and this uh, cemented sandstone and uh, say non porous limestone have very high values of uh, or high values of electrical resistivity. So, this uh, the electrical resistivity of ground water. So, depends upon ionic concentration and ionic mobility. And uh, ionic mobility of uh, salt solutions. So, this mobility 
is related to the molecular the electrical molecular weight and electrical charge electric charge. So, here so this uh, mobility of uh, for example, mobility of this sodium chloride solution is uh, much higher mobility of this calcium carbonate solution and uh, so as uh, also as ground water temperature increases it has higher ionic mobility So, therefore, this electrical resistivities are uh, electrical resistivity values are multiplied by correction factor. To obtain the electrical resistivity at the standard temperature of 25 degree Celsius. So, the most common application of uh, electrical resistivity method electrical resistivity log is to obtain or to determine the proper place for uh, fixing well screen for uh, appropriate lengths or say optimum lengths and in this case so, the there is what is called a field formation factor for appropriate lengths that is uh, opposite the best formations. So, there is uh, what is called the field formation factor so it, it is denoted by f of an aquifer so this f is determined as the ratio of rho o by rho w where this rho o is the the electrical resistivity of a saturated aquifer whereas rho w is the 
el the electrical resistivity of uh, ground water in the aquifer. And uh, so, this the another application of long normal the electrical resistivity curve is to estimate permeability so in this case so depending upon the as uh, previously mentioned the electrical resistivity very much depends upon the whether it is a fresh water or salt water so therefore we can and so determine the based on the electrical resistivity chart we can determine uh, where the fresh water and is uh, existing and where the salt water is existing so in this case say for example that is the let us say the hydrologic conditions and this resistivity curves electrical resistivity that is uh, E R curves for wells penetrating two aquifers. So, in this case say let us say there is an aquifer there is a well which penetrates a salt water aquifer below the fresh water aquifer. So, in this case uh, this is the this is the well. So, this is a fresh water aquifer above salt water aquifer so let us say this is the the salt water aquifer so this is the salt water aquifer and this is the fresh water aquifer in this case so suppose this is the the water level and uh, so corresponding to this uh, so this uh, suppose this is the the electrical resistivity and uh, this is uh, with respect to the the water level and in this case say so the fresh water aquifer will have a higher and let us say so because of this pumping uh, various uh, this one the let us say the 
So there is a So because of the pumping the salt water has come almost very close to the fresh water uh, aquifer. So in this case, so we will see that the, the electrical resistivity in the fresh water aquifer is much higher and uh, so the, so here this is the so, this electrical resistivity axis with 0. So, this is uh, saline water increased salinity and decreased electrical resist resistivity. Whereas, uh, in this case, so this is uh, so this is the this indicates a fresh water region. So, like that we can determine the based on the electrical resistivity log we can determine whether it is uh, the ground water is fresh water or salt water. So, now we will go to the spontaneous method the spontaneous potential method. So, this is the method of logging. So, in the spontaneous method uh, spontaneous potential method. So, the spontaneous potential so this is the natural electric potential found within within earth. So, that is known as the the spontaneous potential. So, it is uh, measured in millivolts. And uh, so, millivolts from a potentiometer from a recording potentiometer connected to electrodes. And here so again the same arrangement which you used for uh, the uh, short normal and long normal arrangement can also be used to estimate the that is a so the short normal and long normal short normal electrode arrangement potential electrode arrangement can be used to estimate the spontaneous potential.
So, the short normal potential electrode arrangement say with grounding. So, it can be used to estimate the, the spontaneous potential and the spontaneous potential is there is an equation for the spontaneous potential. So, suppose if we denote the spontaneous potential as S p and the equation is so, S p is equal to minus 64.3 plus 0 0.0, 0 0.239 I am sorry it is plus 0.239 T into log of uh, rho f by rho w. So, this rho f is the drilling fluid resistivity electrical resistivity in ohm meter and this rho w is the ground water resistivity, ground water electrical resistivity. So, that is also measured in ohm meter and T is the borehole temperature. So, this is the borehole temperature in degree Celsius. So, if we know these the three parameters T, rho f and rho w, the spontaneous potential can be estimated. So, we will continue this in the next lecture, uh, we will move on to the radioactive locking as well as uh, other methods of uh, uh, subsurface in uh, ground water investigation through geophysical uh, logging. Thank you.